Ever heard of the air truck? I bet you've never seen a plane shaped this way before, or ever will again. Why was this aircraft designed this way? Let's take a step back in Australian aviation history to learn what shaped this odd-looking design. First, I will introduce you to an eccentric Italian designer named Luigi Pellerini. Pellerini first attempted to light the world on fire with a flying car design while living in Italy at the end of World War II. Unfortunately, that design flopped. Pellerini packed his bags and ideas and moved to Australia, seeking aviation riches. At the time, the land down under was investing heavily in developing their own aircraft and not being so reliant on costly equipment imported from the United States. His first design was the Kingford Smith PL-7. It was a perfect reflection on Pellerini's eccentric style. The PL-7 laid the foundation for future designs that bore the Pellerini name, especially the twin booms with detached T-tails and pod-like fuselage. Powered with an inexpensive and readily available Armstrong Siddeley Cheetah with seven cylinders and 400 horsepower, the PL-7's cockpit was positioned at the very end of a fuselage pod, offering less than desirable visibility for the pilot. Sadly, before the PL-7 could ever gain certification, it was lost in a fire. Once again, Pellerini was jobless. At this time, New Zealand was seeking to develop a homegrown top dresser aircraft as it could no longer rely on aging British relics from World War II. Pellerini was hired by New Zealand manufacturer Waitomo and rolled back his sleeves. Once again, Pellerini's genius shone through on the PL-11 air truck. Combining a similar layout as the PL-7 and using cannibalized T-6 Texan parts, the Bennett air truck was a design unlike any seen before. The cockpit was now placed squarely on top of the engine, rewarding the pilot with a true crow's nest view rarely seen on any other plane in this category. Like the PL-7, the air truck lingered for many years until finally granted certification. But both prototypes were lost in crashes, and the project was never carried forward. Pellerini was jobless again. Fortunately, Transavia from Australia picked up the project, brought Pellerini back to Australia, who redesigned the air truck into the much smaller airframe, the PL-12. Renamed the air truck without a C, it was roughly half the size and half the empty weight compared to the original air truck, but twice as practical and far more economical to operate. In juxtaposition to the original radial lifted from the Texan, the new air truck was now powered with a flat six. It was quickly becoming the global standard in general aviation and was very easy to maintain and operate. At the time, Transavia was one of the first companies whose sole offering was a crop duster, whereas competitors Cessna, Piper, and Grumman had a wide portfolio of other aircraft. The air truck was bizarre and unconventional in more ways than meets the eye. For starters, the aircraft has no tail section to speak of. Pod-like designs are not new or obscure, the most obvious example being the P-38 with its teardrop-shaped fuselage and twin-boom tail. Unlike other similar designs that use this layout, however, the air truck has twin T-tails on each boom, meaning there's no stabilizer behind the fuselage. As a result, the air truck looks ridiculously short-coupled when viewed from the side. This odd arrangement allowed space for a loading truck to be backed between the tails where it could fill the hopper while the engine was running, keeping turnaround time to a minimum. The moment the hopper was filled, the pilot would throttle up and blast off without waiting for the loading truck to move away. After all, crop dusters don't make money when they're on the ground. Built for simplicity and ease of maintenance, the twin booms were interchangeable, as were the aileron flaps, shock absorbers, wheel assemblies, and tailplanes. The wide placement of the tails also kept them out of the range of the chemicals when dispersed, which resulted in a longer life on the field and less corrosion. In most conventional single-engine designs, the pilot is seated inside the fuselage and behind the engine and firewall. Not so with the air truck, where pilots will find themselves sitting on top of the engine. It's a rather unsettling thought, especially knowing your feet could go up in flames if a cylinder blows. This arrangement, in fact, kept the pilots above the hopper and engine, which could otherwise crush them in a crash. This also provided pilots with a very high vantage point and better visibility with no engine in the pilot's field of view. On the flip side, the view to the side was restricted by the shoulder-mounted wings. A 220-pound chemical hopper was located in a cavernous space behind and below the pilot. In the event a pilot needed to clear an obstacle, the hopper could be jettisoned with the flip of a switch. Unlike other crop dusters, the air truck could accommodate a wide variety of cargo in place of the hopper, including human cargo. 
while an additional passenger could be squeezed behind the pilot, in the lower compartment, a bench seat could fit two facing backwards, as they enjoyed a greenhouse view of the twin T-tails. It was reportedly very cramped and very noisy in the rear quarters, and when flaps were deployed, the only exit was blocked. A miserable ride indeed. Another uncanny feature were the stubby wheels, mounted to equally stubby wings. The short tricycle gear was chosen to help absorb the most shock on rough airfields and make crosswind operations much safer. Technically, the air truck was known as a sesquiplane, as the lower wings provided about 20% of the total lift. The wings have the same airfoil as the Helio Courier, yielding excellent short field capability. When lightly loaded, it could take off in 250 feet. Air fences on the upper wing were employed to keep maximum aileron control at low speeds, improving safety. The choice of a sesquiplane layout was no accident either. The wing vortices created by the stubby lower wing helped to disperse chemicals over a wide field and with good accuracy. Power was provided by either a Continental IO520 or a Lycoming IO540, which was known as the Sky Farmer. Even with this modest arrangement, the air truck is one of the only few aircraft that can carry a load greater than its own weight. A fire-breathing muscle car version was offered with a monstrous Lycoming IO720 with 8 cylinders and 400 horsepower, which certainly should have helped in lifting heavier loads, but with the massive amounts of drag likely did not go any faster than the original. As if the IO-720 wasn't enough, there was a proposed version carrying a Pratt & Whitney PT-6 turboprop, but this version never left the drawing board. Seeing opportunities beyond spraying cornfields, Transavia offered the PL-12 in other flavors in hopes to gain interest from other governments. The PL-12 Bushranger was an air truck dressed in army fatigues. This version could squeeze in five passengers and carry them to remote locations with its STOL capabilities, or even hang some light armor such as rockets on its stubby lower wings. Another version named the PL-12 Mill Air Ambulance version was also proposed, which had room for two stretchers plus two attendants. Though prototypes were built, neither version moved forward. Regardless of all of its idiosyncrasies, the air truck appears to fly perfectly well and did its job without complaining. Pilots reported it as very slow and very sluggish in climb, but with good control responsiveness a direct result of having twin tail surfaces. In 1969, a lone air truck was showcased to the world by flying one from Australia to South Africa via Asia and stopping at many countries in between. It's unknown how many were sold after the voyage of that brave air truck, but it did wind up staying in South Africa where a few more units were sold. The air truck was featured in the 1985 film Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome, an adventure flick that took place in Australia. While movie critics lauded Mel Gibson and Tina Turner's memorable performances, the real star of the movie was the air truck, a delightfully Australian aircraft to match an equally Australian movie. Even after all the glitz and Hollywood hype, the air truck never sold in large numbers, and only 117 units were built. Even though it is arguably better in many aspects in comparison to similar powered models, it was also priced higher. Even when accounting for import taxes for models built overseas, it received scant attention or support from the Australian government, something Transavia was fighting for in order to help subsidize production and hopefully lower unit costs. It also didn't help that Transavia was Australian, as Australians themselves had the mindset that their homegrown products were inferior to those built abroad. Though many of the air trucks operated in Australia and New Zealand, they were sold in Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, East Africa, South Africa, Kenya, Thailand, Yugoslavia, Spain, and North America. Of all the air trucks built, only a small handful remain, a testament to the fact that these were rugged little airplanes that fit their mission perfectly and were therefore used and abused to the very end. As is common with crop dusters, many were lost in crashes while sparing their pilots, exactly as they were designed to do. As far as its looks go, it's been said that the air truck was once a normal looking aircraft that crashed, then was put back together by a blind person. But Luigi Pellerini knew exactly what he was doing, and the world is a better place thanks to him and the air truck. <laughs>